So that's Mandarin. That's the five tones. So upper tone, rising tone, which is long, then a short little dropping tone, and then a heart, and then the little dot. Like at the end of a lot of sentences, they'll put ma. So ma means like question. So upper tone, yeah. rising. Rising, drop and rise. Drop and rise. Hard hitting tone, that's the fourth tone. But there's a lot of words, and Chinese make a lot of jokes about, about the tones, because if you say the word in a different tone, they all giggle and laugh. It's like a pun. We wouldn't know, yeah. Their puns are not, their, their puns are based on the tone. Yeah. So you've really got to hear the tone, so when these guys speak and tell jokes and tell long stories, they'll have a lot of puns about the, the tone. So you change the tone and then you got to, yeah. So we have uh, Taiji Chen. Let me write it in the opinion. Taiji Chen. So it's Ta Ji Chen. Now, whenever you have two second tones together, I mean, this is just more advanced stuff. Whenever you have two second tones together, they usually change this to a third, so it sounds better. Tai Ji, Tai Ji Chen. Instead of Ta Ji Chen. See how, see how it sounds very, very un, uh, encumbered. You know, it doesn't sound easy to roll off your tongue. So it's Tai Ji Ji Chen. Yeah, and the Yu. We don't have that sound in our language, but they have a yu sound, so that's chen. Yu, yu. Put the lips together. So that's tai ji chen. So this is a very important for you to know, right? How to say it right. I practice tai ji. Tai ji. Chen. Yeah, tai ji chen. Yeah. So it's hard to say yi, right? Chen. You hear it? It sounds better. Ta ji chuan, man. You know, Ta ji chuan. They say that to a Chinese and they'll be like, what? So a lot of people say, hey, I study Tai Chi. You know, and they're like, Tai Chi. It's like first tone, first tone. And they're like, what? They're shaking their heads and they say, how come you don't you're Chinese, man? Don't you understand? It's the reason that they, you know, they're, not, they're clueless about it. They might be able to pick it up if they're, you know, American culture savvy, you know? So the next one is China. So that's. Zhongguo. Zhongguo. And yet the. So, Zhongguo. Now, watch if I add the Ren, which means people. Zhongguo Ren. Then this becomes what? Third tone, right? Because we got two second tones together. So, Zhongguo. Guo. But now, watch. Zhongguo Ren. And the. This is a sound. It's not really like a like they do in Spanish, like the Latin languages. It's, it's almost like a vibration. So it's Chong Guo Ren 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 Ren. So it's like the tongue is curled in the back of the mouth. Ren. Yeah. In Chinese, that curling of the tongue is mostly the northern people, especially Beijing. And they call it juan sha. So the juan is like to curl the tongue. So when they when they speak, you'll hear a lot of them say, "Oh, tongue war, right, friend?" You know. And so they, they have this very very almost like Beijing opera. You know. And they had ours. Right. So they'll they'll like a shao shao hai was a little kid. So they'll say shao har yeah. instead of shao hai. It's shao har har because that r sound makes them curl the tongue. So to them, it's more pleasing, more you know. I don't know, aesthetics are, are better when you add the R. So everything is, ah, ni har, you know, instead of ni hao, ni har. Uh, when I was walking, here, and I was in, uh, uh, let's see, what's he, uh, I wasn't in Chong Mai, I was in, I was in uh, Chongqing. And uh, I had a taxi driver, he caught me at the, at the railway station, and he seemed like a legitimate guy, he was helping me out. And I said, okay, I'll go with you. So he asked me for, I don't know, Thousand RMB or something. It wasn't that much. He said, I'll drive you around all over the city today and I'll take you back to the train. I said, Great. You know, so he took me everywhere. But one of his friends said to him, when we parked somewhere, he had another taxi driver friend. He said, Pastor Shea, you know, who was he? He said, What a car. And it's, he should have said, Wo da my, wo da, wo means my, da is the possession. Ke ren, ke is like your customer. 
So he said, what a car, right? He said, he said, what a car. So I knew right away he was from Beijing. And I asked him, I said, is your family from Beijing? He goes, he's like, yeah, they did they? And it's like, he was so surprised. But he had the drench, so he knew right away. Because yeah. most guys would have, you know, would have said, Tatra, what a car, right? He's my customer. So he said, what a car. So I, you know, at first I thought he's talking about his car. And I said, no, 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 he's, he's got a Beijing accent, you know. <laughs> After that, he loved me. He was like, I was the greatest guy in the world. Like, I could identify who he was, where he was from. So America is Meiguo. Meiguo. And Mei means beautiful. And again, Guo is country, right? Zhongguo, right? And what zhong is that? This is the this is the uh, Chinese zhong, the center. So they're the center country people. In other words, they believe they were the center of the world, of the universe. So they call themselves the center of the universe people. No, you do that. Yeah, exactly. No, no, not at all. Exactly. Not at all. <laughs> and this character zhong is like really, really important to the Chinese. My my middle name is uh, so my first name is uh, Xu, and then my middle name is Zhong. And then uh, uh, Yi, so Xu Zhong Yi is my Chinese name. So Zhong in the middle, you know, is really says a lot about the person. It kind of sounds like Tony. Really. It does. I mean, they, they gave me a lot of different names, and they asked me to pick one of the five, and I picked Xu Zhong Yi. And they were like, all the, all the teachers were like, oh, ta, ta tuo la hao, ta tuo la hao. You know, they're like, really, he really did a good pick. You know, they're really, it's run the house, run the house. They were really excited about the fact that I picked, you know, uh, that name, because they thought it was real. Because uh, Xu, means uh, uh, gentle, mm -hmm. and Zhong is in the middle, and then Yi means fit, physical fit. Mm -hmm. So the way to the middle is by gentleness and physical fitness, mm -hmm. yin and yang. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so whenever I tell a Chinese person my Chinese name, Xu Zhong Yi, they're like, wow, you know? Do you think is your middle name middle? <laughs> 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 Actually, Zhong Yi is considered my, my first name. Remember, so Xu's my family name. The Chinese have everything in reverse, right? So Zhong Yi is like, it would be like my, you know, what my brothers and sisters would call me, you know? Mm -hmm. Otherwise, people would call me Mr. Xu, Xu Shen So, all right, then the next one we got, so we got America, right? Meiguo. So Zhong Guo Ren. And then the most important for this class, obviously, is Lao Shi. There's that er sound, right? Lao shi. Lao shi. Lao shi. Lao shi. So in all over China, you know, everybody, you hear Lao shi, Lao shi. Especially I taught in a lot of universities and classes in, China, in Taiwan. So, you know, everybody walk down the hall. Lao shi hao, Lao shi hao. You know, everybody in the morning is walking down the hallways. Everybody obviously knew I was a teacher because I didn't belong there. You know, so I had to be a teacher. I wasn't definitely not a student. So when they when they say hello to somebody, usually they're going to give the title, and then they're going to add the word how at the end. Lao shi hao. I mean, they, they do shorten forms like morning is zhao, zhao. But most of the time, they'll say lao shi hao. They give you, you know, your face, and then they'll say hao means good. So lao shi good. You know, like we say good morning. Like, good morning, how are you doing? Yeah. Are you good? And they're just like us, you know, like I tease the students sometimes and they'd say, Lao Shu Hao, and I say, Lao Shu Hao. They say, Oh, hao, 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 hao. It's like, they were like, I'd say, Lao Shu Hao, I said, Lao Shu Bu Hao, Bu means not. So I told them I'm not good, and they'd be like, Oh, man. And I'd say, Did you see what I just said? Oh, <laughs> Yeah, they'd be like, they, I caught them, and they'd be like, oh. really embarrassed, you know. I just do that to play with them, you know, so it's funny because, you know, that's how we are. We say, good morning, and how are you doing today? And it's all horrible. And they say, oh, that's great, good, you know. I used to do that. I worked at a hospital. People would say, hi, Tony, how are you doing today? And I'd say, oh, man, horrible. My dog died, you know, and my mom's sick. They well, that's great, you know. I'm, I'm glad to hear that, you know. And they just keep walking. I said, like, you can hear a word I said. Yeah, yeah well, what if somebody said something? Huh? What if somebody actually, like, heard There was somebody that said, that said something back, but guess what energetic signature they were? They were Jan Predominant. <laughs> Because they were like, wait a minute, that isn't a normal response. Yeah, you guys are like, you know, focused. So, uh, so if you want to just say in general, ni hao. So you got that on your paper. So this is third tone, third tone. Ni hao. 
So you, you hear this, it almost sounds like a fourth tone because you're saying ni ni. You hear my ni But this different from ni hao. That would be the fourth tone. This third tone is ni hao. Ni hao. So often you put the title, Lao Shi Hao. Shen Cheng is male, you know. So you say Shen Cheng Hao. Usually what I didn't say, like to a female student, Xiao uh, Jie is usually for girl. I would just say Shui Sheng Hao, I would just say student Ho. Shui Sheng Shui is a, you know, a person of study. So Shui is to study. So then we got Lao Shi Hao, we see teacher Lo. And what the teacher's response is Shui Sheng Hao. You see it? Second tone. Yeah, so Shui is the second tone. Second tone, Shang Hao, Shue Shang Hao. So a man would be Shen Shang. Shang is like a, a formal respect, you know. And then, real important, obviously, is xie xie, right? Yeah, so you can hear that fourth tone, xie. And then the, the second one, they, they use the fifth tone on usually. So it's a little bit lighter. This is like the question word, so we put that fifth tone in there. So it's xie. So you hear the real heavy xie. 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 xie, 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 right? So it's a real heavy first. The second one is a little bit lighter. It's almost like the question. It's almost like staccato. Xie. Shit. So you hear that, like that staccato hit. Shit. 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 So do those two things mean the same thing? Or those... Yeah, it's like thank, thank. Whenever you double anything in Chinese language, it's for emphasis. Kan kan. What? Kan kan. Yeah, kan means to look. So they say, or they'll say kan yi kan. means to, you know, to look, really look, you know. Kan yi kan. Yeah. Hao hao. Yeah. Can I do that for like mother? Mommy and daddy too, right? Mama, Baba. Yeah, they're similar to us, you know. But sometimes they'll say Ma. You know, but that's more of a close relationship. They'll say Ma. You know, Ba. They'll say Ba. You know, you know, when they're talking to their father. But if they're with a group of people, they would show them respect and say Baba. Yeah. So the way you put this together, you'd say Lao Shi Xie Xie. Lao Shi Xie Xie. So you can see that on the paper, right? So you've got the already the accents Lao Shi Xie. So that's you know the one you can use at the restaurant all the time. You say, uh, I'm not sure that Lao Ban, Lao Ban. Yeah, I think uh, Ban is the first tone. Lao Ban is boss. So you are Lao Ban Xie Xie. Lao is like the owner of the restaurant, you know, if you go buy something, you'd say Lao Xie Xie. So you'd say owner of the business, thank you. They do differentiate between between male and female, they say Lao Ban Niang. Niang is an old Chinese word for female. But if you say Lao to a woman, it's okay too. Like at uh, Mei Sheng restaurant, right? You'll see everyone leave and say Lao Ban Niang Xie 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 Xie. You know? So you can just say Lao Ban if you want. You don't pronounce the N. No? Uh, you say uh, no, no, you, you say the N. Lao Ban. Okay, you hear the N? Lao Ban. Lao Ban Hao. Lao Ban Hao. I think it's first tone, but I, I have to check. You know, my, I lose my tones after a while. And it's funny, because I used to ask the Chinese, you know, what tone is that? And they had no clue. I often asked them, I would say, you know, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get this word, what tone is it? They'd say it about four or five times, and they go, honestly, I don't know. <laughs> so they don't think of it in terms of this fashion. No, because this is the way they speak. I mean, they're raised from birth, and they hear it, and it becomes inculcated almost into their genetics. Their DNA has it. So eventually, they, they, it'd be like saying to Americans, tell me about your culture. Well, most Americans come up with mom, apple pie, and baseball. You know, I was like, okay, that's real education. You know? <laughs> they couldn't, you know, talk about our culture. So it's the same with them. 
to talk about their culture, to talk about their tones is very difficult. And I, I tried many times, but the only time you could get somebody, if they're a philosophy professor, maybe a historical professor, they might have some, you know, knowledge of the West so they could sort of differentiate for you. Okay, then the next one is um, Bu Ka Chi. So that's all four tones. Bu Ka Chi. So four tone, four tone, four tone. Bu Ka Chi. Now, Ka Chi, the meaning of that is to be polite. It's uh, to be the, the polite Chi. Ka means to be very polite. Ka Remember we talked about the Ka It's a guest. So it's don't, it says don't use Bu. Don't use your guest chi. K is a current. It's like a guest. So don't use your guest chi. That's what they're telling you. Because you're breathing out, oh, you're welcome, you're welcome. You're saying to them, and then you, know, you say thank you, and, then, and they would say back, oh, you know, don't use your guest chi, buka chi. So they're telling you, don't, because, you know, air is chi. So when you, instead of saying, don't say you're welcome, you don't have to, or don't say thank you, you don't have to, they'll say, don't use your guest chi. So everything in the Chinese is chi, you know? It's just, and they're, they, they, they can't uh, talk about it, you know. They're not very erudite about their own language because it's just part of them. So if I broke this down for a Chinese, they would be like, wow, yeah, that's true. That's what we're really saying. We're really it's saying. It's like an idiom, then. So we, we often use those same things in English, and we don't think about what it means. Yeah, and they, well, they, all, of their, all of their little idioms and sayings always have uh, four characters to it. So most of the Chinese words are, you know, like, they're trying to tell you, you know, don't do something, do something, you know, it usually has four characters to it. Yeah. And then, uh, Shang Ke, so that means class begins, and, uh, let me see, I can erase this up. The character for Shang is going up, so it's this character going up, and the character for Sha is going down. So we go up the class, Shang Ke, so Shang is, uh, Fourth tone and ku is fourth tone. Shang ku. This is a different ku. So there's an example here. This is different from ku ren. This is a different character. And then sha ku is again. It's fourth tone. Fourth tone. Sha ku is this. So sha ku. And we have. I say, and I hate the way they do the X. Sha ku. Sha ku. Sha ku. So. Often when you come into the class, the teachers would, in, in China, they would <clears throat> they make like a, you know, clear their throat, or they put their book down a little bit heavy on the podium, and then one of the students would stand up and say, Shei Zhang, Shang Ke, you know, and then they would all stand up, and they'd all, sure how, they'd all bow, you know, it's really formal. <laughs> Even in the colleges, it's funny, when they start doing that stuff to me, I go, no, no, you have to do that to me, and they're like, so sometimes I walk in quickly, and they, you know, not pay attention, they forget the class, and then boom, they'd all do, you know, do the, Routine. But sha means to go down the class. So this go up the class, go down the class. Pretty funny. I guess in the ancient times, you know, you went to class on mountains a lot of times, or hills and temples and places like that. So you to go up the you know, mountain was to go up the class, start the class. When you left, you went down the mountain back to your little village, right? So a lot of these guys had temples and stuff up in the mountains. So any questions? So you know this is a you know basic primer, just to, words that you need to know. Tai Chi Chuan, Zhongguo, Zhongguo, Mei Guo, Mei Guo, Zhongguo Ren, Mei Guo Ren, Ren is person. So this is the character for for Ren. So if you look, look, you look at it, right, it's really funny. I used to show Chinese people this and they said, I don't know, how do you think of it? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. See? There it is. Yeah. The person who types it. Big is a person like that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. What is yeah. it? Out. The word for big, for large. And then small is the person on your knees. Yeah. Kneeling down. Yeah. Shall. Yeah. So, yeah, it looks a lot like uh, a person doing Tai Chi, you know? Or, you know, as they would say, a person taking a step, right? Take, right? <laughs> taking a step. 
you know, in, in Rick's class. I mean, they want to learn. learn that's the typical sign of an immature person. They want to learn, 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 learn. They don't want to take the time learning, you know. And if you say to somebody, Rick said to the class today, well, I'm going to tell you all, you know, this is going to take 10 years to learn. The next week there will be two or three more, I guarantee you. And that's not an experiment you want to try because you don't want anybody to lose the chance. It's study time you said. But I used to do that in the old days, and people would get, you know, in Pacific College classes, they would get really freaked out. You know, and I'd tell them that, you know, Tai Chi is something you have, you have to fall in love with because it's so boring and so, but because of that, you get enlightenment. Remember what the Asians did. You do the same thing over and over and over and over again. Mondo, you know? And you just keep doing it and doing it, and finally you reach enlightenment. I used to think it was by reading more and going to more places, and I said, no, enlightenment comes by just doing the same thing over and over again, you know? Making your kids dinner every night. You know, they're running around the house, and you finally reach enlightenment of how precious they are to you or whatever, you know? That's, that's, what's, that's what it's all about. Like you play music with your son. You have that enlightenment about him that maybe normally people wouldn't have with their children because they don't spend that much time with them in their activities that they love, you know? So it's 